scare a human being? Well, a Bigfoot or a creature or something like that. So if they're out and you run across aliens, maybe they shapeshift into a form to scare you away. I don't know. What do you think? And that's a that's a real possibility, and that's definitely something that that we're we're you know we're looking into, and that's a, what a lot of people have been saying, and and we've had some of our our own experiences now that kind of support that. You know, the, the, it seems like the the bigger the the bigger or the more deeper we dig, the more stuff seems to happen to us. So so the, the growing hypothesis is is that if they're alien and they're here, whether the, whatever form they're taking, they're obviously smarter than us, right? By definition? Do you agree with that? I think they would have to be, because, I mean, how would they survive uh, as a primate out in the forest? Uh, I just, I can't buy that one without some type of technology. I, I, I do think they're, whatever it is, has the capability of shape-shifting. Shape-shifting, and maybe they're not here all the time. You know, Ron Moorhead's new idea is that they're interdimensional, that that they pop in and out of existence, you know, and 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 the growing the growing hypothesis right now is that is that whatever whatever these contact experiences are, and we're talking about contact experiences, right? There, you had a contact experience that it was well cho- that it was chosen to be the way it was for you personally, in a way, it wasn't accidental. It knew you were there, and it appeared that way. And chased you for whatever reason. I don't know, but uh, do you have any idea about that? Well, what does it do for you, change you. Well, I can, uh, first thing I would say before that, I'm going to say a lot of the sightings of Bigfoot have been in areas where people have claimed there's portals, or you know maybe they go from one dimension or a parallel universe, or who knows where they're going from one place to a, a, another. In my case, let me tell you how what I. And you can then make any assumption you want. We hiked in about two, maybe two and a half miles deep in the woods to get to this where the internment camp was. My friend uh, says, hey, look at that huge bear across the creek. Across the creek, there was the, uh, the side of the mountain where a mine was. Where we were at was the internment camp or what was left of it. I looked with my camera because I had a telephoto lens on it. I went to look at the bear and maybe take a picture of it, and I realized it wasn't a bear. At the same time I looked at it, it discovered us, and it screamed. The next thing I know, it's running towards us. We're running, you know, back to, to get back to the car as fast as we could. I turned around maybe once or twice during that whole time running back to the car, And I noticed one thing I thought was really strange. It was running on two legs and four legs, two legs and four legs. Now we get back to the car. I'm I'm opening the car door. I notice there's a a Bigfoot or whatever it is about 25 feet away from us in the tree line from where I parked. And it's bending like a four or five inch tree over like nothing. And it's screaming at us. And I remember starting the car. And my friend is just trying to get to the car door and he's opening it and I'm dragging him probably 25, 30 feet before I stop because that's how scared I was. And at that point, there was a big, like the car shook. The thing threw a huge rock uh, on the side of the car. That was my experience of a Bigfoot. Now, I served in Vietnam. I, I went through firefights like you wouldn't be, believe. I went through living hell. That scared me more than anything in my entire life ever could have. I don't know what it is. I can't say it it was a Bigfoot because I have no physical proof. I can tell you it wasn't a bear. And I can tell you it wasn't a human because I don't know any humans that weigh 500 pounds and it's like eight feet tall and runs between two legs and four legs. I just, I've never seen that before. So... You know, it it was probably done intentionally for you and your friend. Maybe maybe for your friend, maybe for you. Did it change you in any way? Yeah, I've never, you know, I grew up in the woods. I went camping since I was a kid with my family. That's all we ever did all summer long. I uh, I have eight children. We used to go camping all the time. Ever since that's happened, I have not gone into the woods. It's changed me. So, so one of the ideas that's occurring is that 
this sort of contact is habituating people. They're seeing how you respond, and it might it might suggest something else, some some advanced form of contact. Uh, you said you you've done, you've done paranormal investigations. No, I I, I interview people. I, I've done talk radio since 1976. I've interviewed uh-huh. thousands and thousands of people through the years. So how long ago was this that you had this experience? Uh, 2002. So it's been a while, huh? Yeah. Have you had any since then that's unusual? No, not, no, not really. Some of the guests I get on my show, but other than that, no. Well, may, may, maybe you will now that you... This possibility that that you you've been contacted by something that's 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 perhaps alien in origin in some way, and maybe now you're going to wake up to that, and something else will help happen that'll push you along a little further. I it opened my eyes up to one thing. It opened, you know. I'll be honest with you. Being a talk show host, you you, you how can you say it? You're nothing more than a host. Do, do, do I did I believe? Uh, what a lot of my guests were saying, I was saying probably not. But since that experience of 2002, I kind of now digest everything that people, you know, tell me. And I, I realize there's things out there that I didn't know that exist, be it if it does shape shifting, if it's real, not real, if it, whatever it was, it was enough where it opened up my mind. I can tell you that much. So, yeah, so one of the things we discovered as we, you know, started making the movie. Did you see that clip I sent you? I have not had a chance. I've been so busy, but, yeah, I apologize for that. So we, we posted a clip. One of them, we went to this place called The Vortex and uh, uh, in Montana. It's, it's a tourist trap, and there's some interesting gravitational things going on, but the guy who owns it said he has some sort of regular contact with, with a Bigfoot for, for multiple years. Um. He, he got some footage, maybe where the thing showed himself. It's, it's like they're playing games with each other. And there's this thing called the House of Mystery, where you have these weird gravitational effects. And he's talking to Alan and his wife, who are in who are in the house. It's a small square house. Um, it's really not a house. It's just a building where people have experiences. And I stepped outside with my camera and stuck it up. You know, through the through the open window, and he's talking about his contact with that Bigfoot, and how the Bigfoot likes to come in this spot. And as as he's talking about where that it walks back and forth and rests here, all of a sudden, and I didn't we didn't see this until we got back and looked at the footage because I was I couldn't see the screen. Um, here's this fairy moth like thing that's self illuminated. And we, we know which way the sun's coming, so it can't be lit up. It's pure white. And for three seconds, it flies through the frame just as he's talking about the Bigfoot being in there. So anybody who wants to see that clip, they can go to go to YouTube and Google punch in shape-shifting Bigfoot or Bigfoot shape-shifting. And you can see that footage. It blew us away. And And there's this idea that this Bigfoot is having fun with him. He, the, all of a sudden, it shifts. This big six foot, uh, seven foot creature, as he describes it, turns into this tiny little pixie like thing, which shows that it has a sense of humor. And then Tom Powell, one of the early proponents of paranormal Bigfoot, said, uh, Yeah, sense of humor is a sense of inti- a good sign of intelligence. So you'll see that if you want to take a look at it. Okay. And Where were we going? So, so I, go ahead. Uh, let me give you one other. You know, when, when I did the first series, Chasing Bigfoot, I interviewed a lot of people. One, one of them was Doug, was Doug Hycheck. Have you ever had him on? No, I have not. He, he he was the originator of Monster Quest, which was the first of this whole genre of running out and looking for monsters. And And I interviewed him for that, and he talked about hair as he analyzed and some experiences, and, and and he never gave any indication that he he thought Bigfoot was anything other than flesh and blood during the interview and in my conversations with him. But then recently, I uh, was talking to him again. There's this. Are you familiar with the 411 phenomena? Oh yes, yes, very familiar. People go missing. Um, we 
we were we, we talked to to David Pilates, said his name, yeah, about maybe working something up with Doug to do a series. So I said, Hey Doug, I'm doing this this feature film now on on paranormal Bigfoot. I know you're not into it. He said, Oh no, no, I'm into it. And he started describing all his paranormal experiences he had with Bigfoot, including photographing orbs in connection with them. So a lot of these people just aren't coming forth. They're not describing those paranormal experiences they had with Bigfoot. You have anything to add, Al? No, not none of that. So, yeah, Alan recently had an experience on our land. You know, we're, we're, we're on the edge of the Rocky Mountains. You're familiar with Boulder? Oh, so, yes, yes, certainly. So we have acres that are contiguous with Rocky Mountain National Park, which people have talked about. Bigfoot showing up, so we've been messing around trying to open up a portal, and Alan had an experience in the process. Do you want to talk about that? Sure, yeah. We, uh, Upon the recommendation of some of the folks we interviewed for our film, we were trying to use dowsing rods and trying to interact with anything that might be out there, and we were we were inquiring about if there was a portal or a doorway um, in on that property, and the dowsing rod seems to be pointing towards a certain direction, so I followed them, I uh, crossed over the river to the other side where the dowsing rod seemed to be pointing, and I started heading up the hill, and um, it wasn't long after I started the, the ascent up the hill that I got a, sh- a sharp pain in the front of my face and became really disoriented, and it was hard to, to keep walking upright. And it, it just was an intense pain, and I kept kind of walking and pushing through it, and I finally got up a little closer to the top of the hill, and, and it just the pain just went away, and I was fine. And the, the dowsing rod seemed to indicate that um, what I was asking for was somewhere around an outcropping of rocks that was out of my reach. It was high up that I couldn't get to. So it's an area that we'll, um, we'll be returning to investigate more. Interesting. We did one gifting situation there. We put a, a feather in a bottle and hid it. I mean, this is really deep in the woods. Nobody would ever find this. And we came back twice. The first time it was still there. The second time you can describe. Yeah, we found, um, we, like you said, we put a, a couple feathers in, or a feather inside of a bottle and stashed it under some rocks. And we found the, the bottle knocked over and the feather was removed. And it was um, down, I would say, maybe four feet away. And it was perfectly placed in this crevice uh, in a crack in the rocks. It was just like it was left there for us to find. It was really interesting. And some people will say that that's a sign that whatever this, whatever this is that's going on that's contacting people wants to play. They they want to interact. Interesting. They're giving us a, that it's okay, that, and they'll continue to interact if we if we're interested. So. so uh, Go ahead. Uh, I, your feeling on Bigfoot, do, do you feel they're not flesh and blood, or do you feel they are flesh and blood? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't feel that, that they, they need to eat and poop and do all the things, but I, but I certainly believe that they make that appearance of, of being flesh and blood for a short period of time, long enough. You know, they, no, nobody ever sees them for very long. I can, have you ever... Nobody follows them for a half hour. They're almost always, it's, it's a short encounter, brief, um, profound. Some, for some people, it's transformational. So, so whatever it is, it's, it's not the usual sort of hanging around existing as flesh and blood, but it, can, it certainly has weight because it makes heavy footprints. And for a short period of time, probably takes on the form of something quite large like you, like you saw. Well, That's I, my guess. I put mine lasted well over twenty minutes. My experience, and I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was flesh and blood or shape shifting or who knows. I, anyway, we we need to go on break, guys. We're going to be back in about three minutes, so don't hang up. I'm going to mute the uh, you know the phone here till we get back. Everybody, you're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with Gary. You can check out our website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. You can check out his book on our website, too, and where you can uh, purchase it at when it's available. We'll be back in about uh, three minutes. You're listening to Night Dreams. <laughs> 